Hello, Miss Stokes here, and in the next few lessons, we're going to explore collage and sculpture. Here are a few artists that have explored collage. Kurt Schwitters used found material to create his densely layered collages, using newspapers and old train tickets. Here is the work of Alexander Grant, and I like how she uses the stripes to bring together her chaotic collages. Here we have Jimmy Shirell's work. I like how he rips the paper and images of his collage to reveal different layers of his work. Next we need to start collecting some of our own materials to collage with. I made a few of my own patterned paper by using a paintbrush and some watered down paint. I also kind of drew patterns and marks on paper with a marker pen. Straight lines and swirls work pretty well, as long as you keep an even consistency when making your patterns. I used a plastic bag dipped in paint to kind of create a crackle effect. I also gathered images and areas of block colours from magazines and newspapers I found around the house. You may have some images left over from old projects. You could also add these into your collaging resources. I started off by cutting up geometrically at random the photographs that I'd found and placed them back together in interesting and strange compositions. Then I started to use my patterned bits of paper that I'd created. And again, I cut these up at random and tried to slot and fit them into the shapes that I already had on the page. I didn't always stick my work down. I kind of placed and arranged them. And at some point I decided to completely change my composition because I feel it's not working or it's not balanced or maybe there's one colour has got too much in one area. I then started to use smaller, thinner stripes, a bit like Alexandra Grant's work, to pull my composition together to kind of add detail and intricacy. When I was happy with one of my composition, I started to stick it down, but I still kept areas free so I could still kind of think and consider and rework my work. Don't be precious, let your collage change. That's the beauty of collage. It's less precious than most materials. It's not like a really intricate drawing you spent hours on. You can change it, you can rework it, you can explore it in many different ways. So enjoy the freedom of this way of working and gradually something will start to come together and you'll start to get a really beautiful and interesting composition. One thing that you may have noticed is that I have limited my colour palette. So when you're choosing your materials to use, I'd consider about three colours and then use some blacks and whites to kind of enhance those three colours. And then you get a kind of a more consistent and a more of a patterned effect in your collage. I also added stripes of bright colour to draw your eye around the collage and you can see here I used stripes of red and a little triangle of red to make the collage pop and come to life because it was all looking a little bit one colour initially with the blues and the greys and I was initially th considering using pink but then I applied some red which really lifted the collage and made it pop. I also decided to add some highlights as well, so I found some white bits of paper with a little bit of writing on which gave a little bit of texture and pattern and started to apply those on top of my collage. So towards the end I just started to add these intricacies and details to kind of layer up and draw you around the collage. So this is my final collage, I think it's quite effective. Do leave the edges jagged, you'll see why we need to leave them jagged later on. To develop my project further, I zoomed into my collage and cropped air interesting areas and sections of the collage, creating these zoomed in photographs. Another way of documenting my collage. Next lesson, we'll be using these collages to turn into a sculpture.